Welcome, everybody. I am so honored and excited um, to present to you today some folks from Word Cracking. They've done some really clever stuff down under. Um, we've got Michael Shanahan and Sally Andrew, two folks from Word Cracking, and they are bringing us today a presentation about why we would even care about morphology, how you can make it fun, and even more cool than new software that they've developed called Word Cracker, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So, so um, if you don't know me, I'm Marty Ginsburg from Reading Simplified, and it's our mission to streamline instruction and accelerate student achievement. And we teach morphology at the upper levels of our approach to cracking the code, um, getting kids to become fluent but we don't have anything as cool as this software to, to use. So I'm really eager to share this with you. And if you're a Reading Simplified member, you're a member of the Reading Simplified Academy, um, Word, Cracker, Word Cracking has been generous enough to share a discount code for just you guys. So stay tuned members and you will get that um, inside the Academy and in the little letter. But um, and I'm really glad to see so, so many people from all over, including now we do have um, even uh, Australia rec represented. There we go. South Australia. Thank you. We've got uh, guests from Ireland, many from all over the states, on Canada, and, um, and as um, Deb says, she's glad to be here. Thank you, Deb. So... I am mostly the host. I'm going to try to direct traffic and sometimes do it better than I just did and help uh, uh, hear your questions and bring them before Michael and Sally. But mostly this is going to be about them and what they have to present for us and fingers crossed that our tech works. So let me pass it over to you guys and see um, if there's anything you want to say by way of introduction before you get into more about word cracking. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Michael Shanahan. I work as an interventionist. So I tutor kids who live with dyslexia, dysgraphia and dyscalculia. So I do maths as well. Um, and I've known Sally and Bill who can't be here today, but Bill and Sally came up with the concept of the word cracker and originally made it as a manual, like a, a hard copy manual and a board that you can see behind me on my wall up there, hopefully. Um, and so I've been working with Sally and Bill on putting the word cracker online and making it digital. Sally. Thanks, Michael, and thanks, Marnie, for inviting us. Um, yes, I'm, my name's Sally, and like Michael, I work as an interventionist and have done for many years. Um, and I also work alongside Bill in training teachers in what we call the Play Group, which is an interventionist program. So uh, we were very excited last year when Michael came on board because he's got all the technical skills to have developed this online version of our Word Cracker. And we, we just love it. Um, and it's just, yeah, he's just done such a brilliant job and we're really grateful to him. <laughs> well, I got to demo this software and it is so cool. And I think it's going to be so uh, impactful for teachers but also for students but a teacher might find a cool tech for a kid but when she or he can use the you know the tech easily him or herself then that is you know golden beyond golden <laughs> so i'm really excited to um to hear what you guys have to say so michael how about we we have you take it away yeah absolutely share my screen and ask questions go. you guys as we go along and we'll yep. try to bring Michael in the picture. Uh, okay, so... Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so here's what we're planning to do today. We want to give you a quick introduction to morphology, what it is, why it's important, and go through how it helps kids with reading, spelling, grammar, and vocabulary. And then we're going to give you a quick tour of the online word cracker. I mean, we're going to be using the word cracker throughout, so you'll get to see it, but there'll be, there's a lot of features that um, we want to highlight at the end. And then we'll have time for questions, but we're also happy to have questions as we go. I think it's probably important to say that morphology is really complicated and you can spend forever 
you know, exploring the depths of morphology. So in the short time we've got today, we're really only going to scratch the surface. But what we want to give you is enough of a taste of what we do and, and how the word cracker works so that you can, you know, you want to find out more and you have a basic understanding of it if you don't already. Um, so, Sally, what is morphology? <laughs> yes, I want to introduce you to this family called the Eames, okay? We, we might know about the first two. Oh, we've lost the slide, Bill. Okay. Oh, we got it. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, sorry, yes, so we have the Eames. So we have phoneme, grapheme, and morpheme. And uh, I'm sure in, from reading Simplified, you're all very familiar with phonemes and graphemes, and quite possibly morphemes as well. But in case you're not, let's just run through this. Okay, so when a, a child is starting to learn, we teach them this, uh, this business that letters are, um, are phonemes. They, they make a speech sound. So if I've got the word cat, I've got three sounds. I've got the cat, okay? And we represent those by the grapheme links with the letter C-A-T. So we're very, very mindful when we're starting to teach young children that we're teaching those phoneme grapheme links. And then at some point we come into this business of the morpheme, okay? And a morpheme is the smallest unit of meaning in a word, all right? So if we can go to the next slide, I'll show you what that means, okay? So a smallest unit of sound is a phoneme, the smallest unit of spelling is a grapheme, but a morpheme, the smallest unit of meaning, okay, um, could be a whole word, like in needle. Now, we can break needle into syllables, of course, but knee on its own and dull on its own does not mean anything. So we have to use the whole word together uh, there as a morpheme. It could be something that we put on the beginning of a word, which we call a prefix, as in the prefix in, like in inject. Okay, or a morpheme could be what we refer to in word cracking as a root. Now, in some cases, people will call this a bound morpheme. A bound morpheme is something like ject, where you can't use ject without um, putting a prefix or a, uh, onto the beginning of it. It won't make any sense. You can't ject something. Uh, and a morpheme could also be a suffix, such as in the suffix ed and ing, those regular ones that we use. Okay, on to the next slide. Okay, so you know why do we why do we go about morphology? Why do we need to have it um, in there? Okay, so it very much goes hand in hand with phonology, and of course. Uh, it's, it's important to make note that we have to have the phonology in place first. Okay, we can't be teaching suffixes such as ing, uh, g, making the ing, um, unless we taught those phonemes. So we must have the phonology in place. But it's our language is morphophonemic, all right? So uh, we need these layers to bring in uh, um, more smooth reading and uh, and meaning to it as well. Um, anything to add in there, Michael, that you wanted to say about that? No, I think that for me, that was a big revelation when I first um, thought about language like that. You know, we have the parts of the code, the letters that represent the sounds, but then there's also these little chunks of meaning. And I think that's a real game changer for kids when they realise with our language and our writing that there's these little chunks that they can latch onto to try and help them understand and, and get meaning out of a word and help with their reading. Mm, that's right. So do we need both? And, and, and Michael's referred to that. You know, once you've started to acquire these, these regular prefixes and suffixes under your belt, it just makes the whole decoding process a lot easier for the students. Uh, and we know most of us who are working in intervention, we know that our children really struggle with decoding. Uh, and so all the tools that we can give them, which will help with decoding, um, are, are necessary and vital. As I said before, we have to have the phonology in place first. You know, um, we can't go into it. So this often in, it goes into depth of teaching, more in the, the middle primary school years, 
But it's not to say that it can't be started in a very simple form with your young students as well. Uh, what are the prerequisites? Well, of first of all, you know, your students need to be aware of what a syllable is. And I'm sure all of your students in Reading Simplified are, but that's, that's, a, that's a given that you've got to know what a syllable is. They have to have an understanding of what a vowel is and what a consonant is, because we use that terminology a lot in the word cracking. Uh, you need to be able to know whether those vowels are short sounds or long sounds, because if you want to uh, decode a word like um, reporter, okay, where well that first prefix is re, uh, you've got to know that makes a long vowel and, and not a short vowel. Uh, and that we've really just talked about how does it help with reading. It's, it's making that whole process of decoding uh, swift and more automatic for our students. So taking a load off the working memory. Anything else you wanted to add, Michael? No, no, I think that's a great summary. Okay, cool. All right. So, uh, and the research backs this up, that children read aloud non-words with a morphological structure more rapidly than those without one. And we're going to demonstrate that to you now with a, a little passage of reading. I think that's the next one that's coming up, isn't it, Michael? Okay, so if you have a look at this and just have a practice read to yourself, I'll read it out for you. Um, lately, the devil <laughs> has been handily weird. We have ex transjectory flibs and preverting, and so we have had teleprossing flows, which made the predopping spreets inscrutable. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I could read that that well, Sally. <laughs> well, you know, let's have a think about this. You, you, you have to have the phonology in place, don't you? You know, but what made it easier was your ability to quickly chunk off those little uh, prefixes and suffixes. So you shouldn't have to put any effort into decoding that. Um, and just because you've, you've experienced those so many times um, in your reading practice over the years. So you've got suffixes like ing and able, and there they all learn. So we don't even think about it. We don't have to, start, you, know, um, you know, pause and think, oh, what's that? Uh, but oh, we, we just get it, you know, because we've experienced it so many times. Mm. And we are exposed to these so much in our language, you know, at a subconscious level, because generally kids living with dyslexia or reading difficulties have no problem with verbal language. And they have no problem understanding and speaking. But when it comes to written language, it's more difficult. And so we really want to help them make, make these kind of little sight words, like sight words, but the little chunks that they recognise on sight. Um, and that's, sorry, did you want to say any more about that, Sally? No, no, just, we're just talking about that. That's what we refer to as that orthographic mapping, you know, so it's mm. more to become internal. Yeah, and so that's the theory behind the word cracker. So if we have a look at the word cracker now, um, this is the word cracker website and the software just gets embedded in the screen here and it's got a little full screen button so I can click that and make it full screen. If we just look at it's got several modes but if we just look at the first mode which is the all morphemes mode it looks a little bit overwhelming because there's a lot of functionality here but if we just look at it at its basic level knowing that kids becoming familiar with these morphemes or these little chunks of meaning in words knowing that that helps them read and helps them with their understanding and their fluency We've deliberately separated them out into separate sections and we've colour coded them. So we've got prefixes over here which are green. Um, so prefix D is green, colour coded, and it sits in this part of the cracker. Now, if you're American, you may not know what I'm talking about, about a cracker, because I think it's a mostly British and Australian thing, but we have this thing called a Christmas cracker and you pull both ends of it and a toy comes out and it explodes at Christmas time. <laughs> but you can think of it maybe as a wrapped candy or something. But the whole idea of it is that there's three separate sections to represent the three different uh, parts of words, which are prefixes, bases or roots, and suffixes. And they're colour-coded, so that, as I've said, the prefixes are green, bases and roots are black. 
And the suffixes have two different colors. So we have blue suffixes, which are consonant suffixes. And consonant suffixes are called that because they start with a consonant. And these are blue because we want to impress on kids the fact that consonant suffixes are usually safe to add to the end of a base, meaning that we don't have to change the spelling of a base word. So the difficult thing about morphology is that when we add suffixes, we often have to change the spelling of the base that we're adding it to. But luckily with consonant suffixes, they are generally safe. We can generally just add them. But we've made the vowel suffixes red because these are the dangerous ones. So generally when you're adding a vowel suffix, that's when some of the morpho morpho morphological spelling rules come into play and you have to change the spelling of the base or the root. So the cracker is designed deliberately to make this visual separation. We know that kids living with dyslexia struggle to pull words apart, to recognize these chunks in words. So the more practice they can get with seeing them as individual chunks and seeing them separated like this, the more chance there is that they'll recognize them as they do lots and lots of practice. So we've talked a little bit about how the word cracker will help your students with reading. Okay, does it help with spelling? Well, if you look at this slide now, um, I don't think I'd be the only one who would have experienced this type of spelling uh, through students. You know, you look at a word like making and you could have any of those combinations before you actually get to the correct one. Of, you've got make and you've got the drop the E to, to add on that vowel suffix. And then we've got that common problem um, of dropped, you know, because you've got the ED making that sound. Uh, and then you've got the doubling rule. I mean, spelling is just, it's quite amazing that anybody can spell well, really, to be honest, because it's, <laughs> it's a very complex matter, you know. And I just put another couple of examples there. So, you know, um, sometimes we teach all of these things in isolation. We have our spelling things and our grammar things and our reading things. But we're trying to uh, show that through the word cracker, you've got these inbuilt tools which will help you at whatever stage your student's at. So I'm going to hand back to Michael now, and he's going to show you just one of the functions um, that, that's available in the spelling section. Yeah, so this is the all morphemes mode where we're looking at everything. But... To help with teachers, now I live with dyslexia, dysgraphia and ADHD. And so when I'm teaching, I need all the help I can get. And so really when I built the word cracker, secretly what I've done is just build a tool for myself to make it easier to remember stuff and easier to teach. So really it's dual purpose here. Yes, it's great for the kids as we've already talked about, but I find it incredibly useful because you know, sometimes I forget stuff and particularly if I'm coming to a spelling rule or teaching a suffix that I haven't done for a little while, I need a bit of a reminder and some support. So we've tried to build as much support as we can into the system for the teacher. So if we look at this, these presets here, these tier one lesson presets, you could think of these as spelling rules. So these are the big spelling rules that are related to morphology. The first one is safe patterns. So let's just have a look at this first one. So I just click on this preset and you see it selects a whole lot of morphemes for me and I hit go. And so now we've got the scene set up, ready to teach this lesson. And this lesson is about a VCC pattern. So in morphology, we're talking about the pattern of the base word. And one of the things we talk to kids about is patterning words. So if we look at the word yell, we can see that this is a vowel followed by two consonants, so E-L-L. -L. And that's a safe pattern when we see a vowel and two consonants. And built into the word cracker is this patterning button. So when I turn that on, it patterns all the words for us um, so that we can see. So if, like me, you forget or, you know, you're, you're not exactly sure, um, this is a reminder. We've got VCC, which is a safe pattern. And when you bring it down onto the cracker, this little reminder comes up to say that you can just add suffixes to this. So if I've got yell, I can add one of our dangerous suffixes, a vowel suffix, ing, yelling, and I don't have to do anything with this base word. It can just stay as it is, because this is a safe ending pattern. Um, so we've also got the ability to add in your own words. So let's say I want to say kick, 
which is another BTC word, so I've got a vowel consonant consonant. Down the bottom here, you can bring up this little coding tool, so we can say this is a VCC pattern, and you can see we, get, we have the signal that we can just add a suffix onto there, so kick a without changing the base. And as an extra little reminder for teachers, down the bottom here, we've got these safe endings, colored green in a category. So at a glance, if you forget, you can go, okay, these are the safe endings. And these are the ending patterns that we have to be aware of. Um, those. Um, and each time you start up a lesson, there's a little reminder note there just to say, hey, here's how this lesson runs. Here's some things you have to remember. If there are exceptions to the rules, we put them in here just as a reminder. You don't have to have these on. So this is a setting that you can set when you start the cracker up to either have them on or off. Um, so generally we would start here with these safe patterns. And then once we've done the safe patterns, then we would look into the more tricky rules. Now, we absolutely have not got time to go through these, but just as an example with the doubling rule, part one, if I click that and go, now we've got some words here that are ready to go to teach our doubling rule. We've got some tips here to say revise the safe patterns. And then we've got a reminder that this rule is about words. Sally, how many syllables has this word got, that? It has one syllable. One syllable. How many vowels in this word? It has one vowel. One vowel. And how many consonants are after the vowel? And it has one consonant after the vowel. So we refer okay. to that, and I'm sure many of you will have heard of the one, one, one rule. Yep. So this well, is the one, a... one, one rule. Mm -hmm. Go on, Sally. Oh, yes. No, that's just going to say. So when we do that, then we have to be careful about what we do when we add a suffix. Yeah, that's right. So we've got the beware on this pattern because this is the one, one, one rule. So if we're saying batting, this is breaking the rule because we know we need to double it. Obviously, we wouldn't teach it like this. I'm just giving you a demo. But we've got a little tool down here that I can click on. I can type T and turn this into a T so we can double this final consonant with batting. And if you want, <laughs> and if you want, you can press this little ear button and the word cracker will read the word to you. Um, so it's just another little bit of feedback to have a look at, you know, whether what you've done has worked or not. Yeah, so a whole lot of tools in here. As you can see, it's full of tools. All these are presets to teach lesson, lesson types, and the website has all the instructions on how to teach each of these uh, mm. preset lessons. I think I like what you said, Michael, about it being a tool. It's not a program as such. It's a tool to help you in wherever you are at in your scope and sequence. And as you can see, Michael there was adding words in, you know, so you're not restricted to just using the words that we use. We've chosen those words to fit in um, with the pattern that we're talking about, but you can add to that. The other point I just want to make there is when, um, when you've taught something, suppose you've taught that doubling, doubling rule, it's really important that the students get it in the hand. So you might be modeling it first, you know, I do, um, then we do one together with the students and then they do it. So we do have um, uh, some downloads in the website for members who can then have those little crackers that the students can write their, their little bits, their, their words on in, in the correct spaces. Yeah, that's right. In the, in, the, in the members content part, there's a whole lot of templates that you can download. So blank crackers for the kids to use. Um, we've got rules charts, so as kids learn each of the rules, they've got a chart that they can keep a record of on it. We've got game templates in here, we've got diagnostic dictations, um, we've got cards. So there's a whole lot of tools here and templates that you can download and print and use with your students. Because as Sally said, it's so important that kids actually do this stuff. This is yes, not a tool that's designed to give to kids and let them play with it. This is a, a tool for a teacher to demonstrate. Um, the kids have to do this work with pens and pencils and paper. Yeah. Michael, we have a question about does it show the meaning of affixes? And yes, it certainly does. I don't know if you've got yeah. a moment to show that, Michael. Yeah. So <laughs> if we 
turn on this little tool down here. So this is a, the meanings tool. You'll see a little bar comes up. So now if I pull down this root seed, we have the meaning here to go away from move or yield. Re, back again, thing happening now, or past tense. Yeah, so each of these has meanings, which I love because I have trouble you know, remembering all of this, especially when I'm put on the spot. So it's so handy and uh, kids love this when you're working with them because you really go down a rabbit hole of making words and trying to work mm -hmm. out what they might mean based on the meanings of the morphemes. And, and this gives it to you for two. So you can add two into each. I'm just making nonsense here. <laughs> and you get the meanings for those um, as you go through. And each of the words in the lesson presets and so on, they all have meanings attached to them. So it, 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 I can imagine it will bring great fun to the discovery of words, which sometimes the teacher may be more interested in than the student, but this brings some fun to it for the student. And I think I can see kids really getting into it as a result. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, talking about fun, we've got a couple of little tools in here. So you see this silly bases button. This will randomly grab morphemes and put them on the cracker. And there's a collection of just silly words like pop. So pro poply. You could talk to a kid and say, is this a real word? If it was a real word, what might it mean? You can lock pop in and then generate some more random one. Unpops, that could mean something. So kids actually love playing with this and making up silly words and, um, you know, doing activities around the meanings and trying to come up with the meanings of words. We've got two good questions here. One from Jennifer and one from Amy. Yeah. Yes, so um, it won't tell you if it's not a, an actual word. That, that's for you to have a discussion with your student. And do we cover up or delete the A when adding a vowel suffix? Yes, we certainly do. Um, I don't know if Michael can just quickly show you that tool. And what was that, sorry? And the drop the E. Um, oh, drop E, yeah. Yes, using so the how we should crack. That's right. So, so if we had bake, which we mm -hmm. can see is unsafe with this final E, and we wanted to do baking and drop the E, there's a little tool here that lets you just drag it over and drop the E. And this is interactive. And so if we want the cracker to speak this, if I take that off, baking, well, it doesn't sound much different, baking. But if, if this word was, even if it's a word that you type in and you delete that final E, um, it'll speak the word to you as it shouldn't. Sometimes that uh, audio, audible feedback is good because you can hear when it doesn't sound right um, because the E shouldn't be there. But yeah, absolutely. You can do that with the preset words and the words that you create yourself. And what about uh, those folks who don't use British spelling? Yes, well, I think that's really, um, I think I'm right in saying this, this only comes into play with what we call the um, doubling rule part two, which is an advanced skill, where whether or not you double um, the last consonant. So, uh, you know, for example, in traveller, uh, travelling, uh, in British spelling, we would, we would double the L there. Um, and I don't know that you would, would you? Um, no. And, and that's that's, right. that now explains why I've always been so confused. <laughs> I didn't realize that it was a British spelling because I'm like, I see this both ways. It's, and and it, it's, it's a very complex rule. When we do our training with the teachers live here, they, they, I said, look, this is your going out to dinner um, showing off discussion. <laughs> this one. But probably it would be just easier if we followed American spelling. But it's just something you yeah. won't have to teach if you're in America. <laughs> yes. And um, we do have in these teacher notes, we try and make these as useful as possible, but it does have here a reminder that this rule doesn't apply in US spelling. So where there are discrepancies like that, we try and put them in the teacher notes and in the, the plans on the website that you can follow. I'm sure we, you know, we absolutely have not covered everything, but we've tried to cover as much as we can. And we are very happy to add things. If you have 
something useful that you want us to add to these teacher notes, we would love to, you know, get that feedback and add it in. We're, we're probably making a new version of this every week, you know, trying to improve it based on feedback and put extra features in. We've, and we've got a lot of plans for more features down the track. Mm -hmm. But you come down, you know, going right down to the other end where you've got your young children, you know, their first experience of uh, spelling tricky words like does, you know, and, you know, we've taught them to finger spell and they go to us and, and immediately they get it wrong. Um, and so they're getting that feedback that a word is incorrect, you know, but with the word cracker, we can show them that we've got we've got the word do and and then we've got the es suffix going on to make it um into does you know similarly with goes so if you can teach even your in your little ones with just those those high frequency words which cause problems um on the work record that's giving them you know some uh, really positive feedback and I like Peggy's question here asking for how to reduce the amount of options. So what, how would you start, say, a really young reader who might just need to learn about plurals or past tense mm -hmm. and what would the yeah. board look like for them? Yeah. Stick with us because we've got that. Okay. That okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have a look at that in a sec um, because that's really when we're starting to talk about grammar. Um, which we could, nice little segue to start moving on to talking about. That's quite a good idea, Michael. Okay, so yes, yeah, so we've talked a little bit about, we've talked about reading, we've talked about spelling, we've talked about, and now we're going to talk about grammar. And yes, really, just when we're coming to, down to those little ones, you know, what's the first thing we do as, as Bill, my colleague, likes to say, you know, cookies, well, cookies is much better than one cookie, you know, and haven't we all? <laughs> You know, when we've taught teaching a young student and they're having difficulty decoding a word like uh, snips, for example, we put our finger over the S, so they've decoded the snip, and then and then they put and you know then they can see the S on. That makes it easier for them. So um, we we do have a section here, and I think this is a very good place to start with your young student because you know you're not up to doing drop the E or the complicated spelling rules. But just um, getting them used to this fact. So if we can go in, so we've got a whole series of presets on um, suffixes and how they work with grammar. So moving across to the right hand side, we've got this uh, suffix lesson presets and we just have a quick look at the suffix S. So over to you, Michael. Yep. So th this is the one that's introduced first, you know, in the program that we follow play mm -hmm. read. Suffix S is the first introduction to morphology and it's a big complicated thing for one little letter. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I would generally do this over a few lessons. I think kids need to know what verbs and nouns are before they do this. So I'd spend some time on that and that can be quite confusing for kids. But generally, here's where we might start. And again, with the teacher notes, we've got some, um, you know, suggestions as to how you would go about it. But I would generally talk to kids in terms of saying, okay, well, so far we've been looking at letters representing sounds and really that part of the English code say that the T in tin, the T in tin is representing the sound T. So kids have got that. And then I'll say, now there's another part of English, which is where letters do more than represent sounds. So let's have a look at an example of tin. So Sally, if I've got a tin on the table and I say, what have I got here? What do you say? I'll say tin on the table, Michael. It's a tin. Yes, exactly. But One if tin. I have... Pardon? One tin. One tin. If I have right. three of them there, how well, would you describe it? Well, I'd say you've got three tins, Michael. Tins, that's right. So tins. we've changed it, haven't we? We've added yeah. an S to the end. And this mm. S is here, yes, it makes the z sound in tins, but it's doing another job. So this mm. S now is actually turning this word tin into what we call a plural. So this is representing now more than one tin. So you can mm. see that letters not only represent sounds, but they can change the meaning of words. So anyway, mm. without going further into it, that's the kind of discussion I'd have at those very early stages of introducing morphology and 
kids are getting the idea that letters can letters or groups of letters can represent more than just sounds but bring meaning and change meaning and an introduction to grammar because now we're talking about uh, nouns and plurals and then we would also talk about um, verbs so Sally is this a noun or a verb well as you taught me so well last week Michael I know that that's a verb <laughs> <laughs> so imagine a crab and it's got big claws and what do those claws do they nip they nip right so this is a doing word isn't it this is a verb that's right what when i'm using it in a sentence mm. what, let, what's wrong with this sentence would you say the crab nip me no 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 i'd say it. i'd say the crab nips me Yes, nips, that's right. So here we go. Here's the suffix s again, not just representing a sound, but ch slightly changing the meaning of this word. And it helps these verbs make sense in sentences. And it's really how we speak, isn't it? We don't say the crab nip me. We say the crab nips me. And the suffix s is what does that job for us of changing that verb. So that's, that's right. the kind of simple introduction that we would have to morphology and introducing grammar concepts like nouns, verbs, the idea of a suffix. We start with a simple um, consonant suffix, so we're not going to run into any troubles. And we start with words that all have safe ending patterns, so we don't have to go down the road of talking about, you know, complex spelling and that sort of stuff at this stage. And you don't have to use these suggested words. You can put up to six of your own words in here. And if you really want to, you can even type any word you want using this tool and put, put it in here. And there's three of these that you can have. So there's plenty of options for customizing the way you present it. And, and for the person who asked the question, you can see how the board is very uncomplicated then. And if you're working with young students, you certainly don't want to have the word cracker in its full mode with all those morphemes on. It would be overwhelming. So that's why those presets are there uh, to help you just whatever stage your student is at. Yeah, and you can you can have it completely blank if you want. You can just have hmm. the suffix s and, and do your own thing. Hmm. Uh, and, I, you know, I'm adding bases and roots here, but by the same token, I can add um, suffixes and it will automatically color for color them for you based on whether it's a consonant or a vowel suffix and you know I can add a prefix so we've tried to make it as flexible as possible we've got suggestions as to how to teach it and instructions on the website of how to teach each of the suffixes and prefixes but it's really you know we tried to make it as flexible as possible so you can do it your way I think thank you for your comment about making it flexible. I think it's because we, we all three of us are, are in intervention. So we know what we need, you know, um, on a daily basis and what's helpful. So those are, um, you know, you can work through those ready. And when, and when the student has learned what a suffix is and its functioning grammar, um, there is in the downloads, there's a um, sheet where they can record What's, what the suffix does in grammar. So we've just talked about the suffix s, uh, working with nouns and verbs. So they would record that on, the, there's one completed and one down the bottom, which is blank. Um, and they would record that as they learn what that suffix uh, function is in the red or the blue to show the noun on the verb. Uh, so to show the vowel or the consonant suffix. Yeah, very handy and, you know, quite complicated for kids, but you really see the lights going on for them. And you see kids feel a sense of pride and accomplishment and confidence when they start to learn these things. Because normally, uh, normally they, they struggle with this, but when they get this bit of knowledge that perhaps their teacher doesn't have or the rest of the class doesn't have, it really gives them, um, you know, you, you can see the confidence grow in them. It's really good. Yeah, that's okay. right. And, and you know, yes, let's go on. To, I was just going to say about ED, the suffix ED, you know, once a student realizes that it's making a verb in the past tense, it helps to eradicate some of that spelling where the t or the t sound is put in instead. 
Now we want to just move on to roots, which as I said before, in some manuals you'll find these referred to as bound morphemes. So um, when we have what we call a base word like help, all right, that help can stand alone. You know, we can just say, I can help you. But when we have um, what we call a root and some call bound morphemes, um, we need to add on those prefixes to help that uh, function properly. Most of these come from Latin or Greek or Old French. And um, so if we can just bring up that. And the reason we want to talk about this is it's, it's, you really get a lot of bang for your buck, you know, with vocab development. So we have here a set of matrices and matrices, I should say. And let's go, just we just go port. Yes. OK. Um, and Michael's going to bring that up. OK, Michael, do you want to take over? <clears throat> yeah, so in this matrix mode, we've built matrices for all of the bases and roots um, included with the cracker. And the idea of this is, again, it's another way to look at it. Um, and it kind of simplifies it, you know, rather than having just everything there on the screen. These are just the affixes that go with the base port or the root port. So we can bring port down onto the cracker. And theoretically, all of these could go with port. And so we could have the porting or reporting. So really, this is a tool to show kids how these affixes go onto these base words to change them. And it's really good fun and practice for them to try and make words by pulling down the um, prefixes or the suffixes. Um, and there's also uh, some games we have on the website that are to do with this. So we have a Cracker Cup, which is gamifying this idea of a matrix where we give people and kids a matrix and it's a competition to see how many real words they can make with the morphemes that are given to them um, on these matrix screens. Uh, again, sometimes we have been adding more of these as we go as well because, um, you know, it's so complicated, isn't it? It's difficult to find an exhaustive list of all of the affixes that go together. Um, and the other thing, so we've got... Show the saying? meaning, Michael. Yeah. Oh, the meaning, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, once a student has an understanding that port means to carry or to bear, you know, so in reporting, we're carrying the news back to somebody. You know, if you're spelling that word, if a student's spelling that word in syllables, reporter, you know, if they don't understand that this port means to carry, they're hearing read poor in the middle, you know, and ter as the last syllable. So, you know, then they might spell poor as P-O-O-R, they might spell it P-O-U-R, they might spell it P-O-R-E. So this is, you know, one of the reasons that we want them to understand um, the meanings, you know, of these um, roots. Uh, but also you can see how that's going to go build your vocabulary in a huge mm -hmm. way, and therefore yeah. comprehension as well. That's right. And once you start, you know, one of the things I say with my kids is to look for the base. So if you're unsure about how to spell a word, if you can find the base and it's a familiar base like port and you think, OK, I know how to spell port and I'm familiar with that base, it kind of makes it much easier to then work out what suffixes or prefixes are added to it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just another tool that you can use. And the more kids play with this and, you know, explore the possibilities with it, the more these, the more chance these morphemes are going to become embedded and automatic for them um, to make the whole reading process easier. And there's another little complication here. So if I'm going to uh, use the suffix in, so importing, importing is not quite right, is it? We don't import something. So there is this other thing with suffixes called chameleon suffixes where the suffix changes slightly it still has the same meaning but we change the spelling slightly just because it makes it easier to say it with the base and, and in the rest of the word so in the matrix we've got these chameleon suffixes and we make it as obvious as we can so instead of in in this word we use in Im, importing Im, importing Mm -hmm. um, so the end is crossed out. What was that? Mm -hmm. Sorry, did you say something? You got it right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so that the uh, N is crossed out. Um, so in the matrix mode, we've got these chameleon suffixes made as obvious as we can. Um, in throughout the word cracker, when you see a little arrow like this, it means that this is a prefix that can be chameleon. And I can put my mouse over it and just scroll the wheel and it will um, go through all the different chameleon options for that prefix. Or the same thing, I can press the up and down arrow on the keyboard. Um, so, <laughs> so it's just another uh, little tool. Yeah, so we've just got a question about deportation, which has got that sort of connector vowel going on in the middle. Can we make that on our cracker? Um, yes. So we've got the D plus the port. And then we have, you know, some words will have this connector vowel. So I'm not sure in this case whether we would say the shun is the, is the suffix or the ION and the AT is the connector vowel or just the A is the connector vowel. Um, so can we put a, can we write that in? What would you like me to put in? Well, we need, yes. So can we, with the keyboard, can we put in AT? Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you will have, to, that's that's just for pronunciation, that we have these connector vowels that, that come in the middle. So you've got that function at any rate that you can do that. Very helpful. Yeah, and you can do it with this tool or, you know, you could do it yeah. this way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, shall we move Sorry. on? Yeah, was there anything else you wanted to say on that, Michael? I don't think so. So there's just a little delay when you speak, and so that's why I can't quite catch it. That's <laughs> why. So there, that's an example of, of the sort of um, vocab building that you, you can get from an activity like that. We generally start with port because it's a nice, easy one that conveys the meaning. You know, some of the, the roots are a little less uh, easy you know, in, in transparency. Okay. So I thought I would just take this moment to just show some of the other functionality. I think we've covered most of it, but if we go to the menu, this is where the word cracker starts when you first use it. This is where you can turn the teacher tips on and off and the sound effect. So you hear that little popping sound, but you know, that might be annoying for some people. So you can turn that on or off. And here you can go straight into this all morphine mode or from the menu straight into these presets. Um, we haven't looked at any of the prefix lesson preset, presets, but they work the same way. And as you go down the code, we generally teach suffixes first and then prefixes. And so as we get to the prefixes, things get a bit more complicated naturally. Um, and I've got the teacher tips turned off at the moment, so that's why they're not appearing there. Um, I think probably we've covered the rest of the functionality. We've talked about mm. these little random generators. So this is a random generator that uses these morphemes and the silly ones pulling the silly bases. We've had reports from teachers that the kids just love randomly generating these and making random words, which I think is fantastic. If you can get kids having fun with morphology and having fun making random words and trying to work out what they mean, I just think that's brilliant because it's just more and more practice for them. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose I'm not sure that we showed the flexibility of this one. So you've got these presets down the bottom. So when I choose a preset suffix S, it loads the words for that preset lesson and chooses the morphemes for you. But you can also just totally customize it. So I could choose telly form for ing, and now I just have that set up. You know, whatever I want to set up, it gives you that flexibility. Um, mm. And we can go back and, you know, add one more, two more in if we want to, and it remembers it or we can restart this scene and it sets it back to nothing. If I choose nothing, I get a blank cracker. 
We've got different ways to erase things. We've just tried to make it as easy as possible. So I can right click on something to erase it, or I can use the eraser to erase it. Um, and the same works with the, the custom words that we put in. You can edit these custom words. So if I've already put it in and I want to change it or I misspell it, I can just click it and hit uh, the back space to delete it and mm. change it to whatever I want. Um, and I think that probably and yes, Ross, if you can hear the sound. So down, if you can just show yes. that, my, where it yeah. is down. Yeah. Yes, that's right. So if we turn on the speak button, it will speak whatever's on the cracker. Um, and it will also speak what I click on with my left mouse button. So if I click on prefix re here, it'll tell me this is prefix re or root tain or vowel suffix es. So it's just a little audible reminder of that. But what it also does is read whatever you put on the cracker. So even though I typed this in myself, it'll just read it for me. So we could make reporting and it'll read it for us. It's not perfect. It uses the computer's inbuilt text to voice function. And sometimes it gets some pronunciations wrong because this is so hard. I actually use that as an opportunity with kids to say, look, see how hard this is. Even the computer has trouble working out how to say this word because it's so complicated. Um, but it is a handy feature, I think, particularly if kids are, say, playing with this for themselves, with themselves. Um, you know, they love being able to put silly words in and have it read a pack for them. I think that's probably a reasonable overview of the functionality. As I said, we're adding more stuff all the time. But if we just kind of leave the word cracker for now, you can see it's just embedded in this page and I just make it large or small. And we have a look at the members section to see what else you get. So if I go to uh, the premium content, um, we have all of the suffix lessons here and they're here in order, in a suggested order of teaching them. So as we've mentioned, you know, we would st normally start with suffix S. So if I click on this, this gives you the lesson plan for how to teach suffix S. If you're using Playberry, it tells you what teaching point this aligns to in the Playberry system. Now, the reason this is here is because the word cracker was first built as an intervention tool as part of the Playberry program. But it was so good, we thought, why are we just leaving this for intervention? Why not make it available for everyone um, for classroom teaching as well? So you see, this takes you step by step. Step one, step two, on how to introduce this, how to introduce the idea of nouns and verbs and so on. Um, and then you go to the next one, which is ES. Again, takes you through how to introduce ES shows you what they've already done so far. When do we use ES? Gives you the rules. And many of them also have game suggestions at the bottom. This one's got a little video demo of how to play the matching game. And all of these games that are in here, um, we give you the templates for those in the download section. So if we scroll down past the suffix lessons, the prefix lessons, the tier one sequence or the spelling rules as we've been through. Now we've got the templates. And so we have downloadable game templates, which are PDFs of all the games and printable templates for you, whole class activities. We haven't talked about this, but there are diagnostic dictations available, which help you as a class teacher uh, do a dictation with your class and see what they understand for suffixing. Um, and where, where you might want to place them. And there's also an Excel spreadsheet, which is a, a tracking tool for you and your class just to help you understand what your kids know and what they don't know, what you might need to revise or where you might need to start with your kids. Uh, part of the program, well, it's not really a program, but part of the tools um, that teachers use are flashcards or card drills. So many teachers, when they're doing morphology in the whole class, and even in intervention, will as you learn a, 
um, prefix or a suffix or a base or a root, you put it on a card with the meaning and then this becomes a deck that the kids practice and learn off by heart. And it's, it's a fantastic tool for helping vocabulary and helping kids really accelerate their understanding. We've got a full grammar reference chart. So that small grandma chart that we had before, you know, just has a, a few in it, but you know, for teacher reference, we've got a full um, chart there for what, you know, for the effect of morphology on grammar. And we've got word list for um, the various presets. So if you want to do see this example here is for the VCC safe ending. So there's a whole lot of words there that you can use um, in case you're come, having trouble coming up with some words or you want extra ones to practice with the kids. Um, and then, of course, within this as well, we have our training. So Sally and I have given you a little taste of it today, but it is quite complicated. And so we've got a full um, training course here, introductory training course that takes you through what morphology is, why it's important, how to teach it, both in intervention and a classroom situation, and takes you through how to teach the spelling rules and the prefixes and the suffixes. It's got lots of practical exercises in there. It's almost all presented with video and there are some quizzes and interactive exercises. Um, and you get a certificate at the end. And this is what we're offering the discount for. So when you sign up for the Word Cracker training, um, you also get 12 months access to all of the resources and the online Word Cracker thrown in as a bonus. Okay. That's about it, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Any questions? Mm-hmm. We... <laughs> <laughs> we Daddy, have... you know, I the dishes all put the garbage. Is <laughs> <laughs> uh, left out there? <laughs> People are thrilled. They're so excited. And I, ca I gathered a few questions that I think might not have gotten either, either answered directly or maybe want, probably want to explain, expand upon some more. Um, one teacher wants to know if you can change the font of the Not word. at the moment, no. You can't choose that font. And then uh, other folks are asking about the fee. Many people here are just in the public. And, and some people, if they're a reasonable Simplified Academy members, they'll get a discount. But... What yep. uh, what is the whole package cost? Yeah, so there's it depends what kind of um, membership you get, what kind of access you want. Um, so there's a month by month, which is has a five dollar five dollar trial for the first thirty days, and then it's fifteen dollars a month. Or for annuals, there's a twenty percent saving on that, so that works out to be twelve dollars a month. Or you get the annual with the training course, which is two ninety five for the training course, and you get the annual membership thrown in. So that's, that's Australian a deal. dollars. Yeah, and this is Australian dollars too. So if you're in America, that's really good news. It's a cheap. It's cheaper with the exchange rate, you <laughs> Americans. Yeah, it's, it's like one and a half times cheaper. Um, and then there's school membership options as well. And so you could have a school, small school membership where you get ten teachers or 20 teacher membership or 30 teacher membership with kind of a sliding scale discount. Um, and we also do face-to-face -face training in Australia and online training as well. Um, and we're prepared to be flexible, you know, with the school memberships and so on. Um, you know, we really, we really want this to be used because we really believe in it and we really want kids to be able to learn this stuff. And, and to make it easier for teachers because I know when I first started doing this I was quite overwhelmed with how complicated it was so you know really trying to make it as simple as possible you know it's still complicated but um, hopefully with this step-by-step -step guide you know and I can speak from experience here you really can teach this and just be one or two steps ahead of the kids you know, it's not, you've got your head around what's coming up, you know, you get your head around suffix S and suffix ES and maybe suffix less, then you're probably in a position where you can start and then just try and keep a step ahead um, mm. and learn as you go uh, mm. because it's almost impossible to learn the whole thing in one hit. And um, tell us more about the scope and sequence. 
where do they get that? And also it seems like you can use whatever scope and sequence you already have because it's so flexible, but you're also advising something. Is that just something that would, they'd find as part of the training or? If yes, we, it's, we've got those presets there in terms of they fit in with what I suppose is our playbury uh, order of doing things. Um, but, and, but also it's just, um, you know, you start with suffix S because that's the easiest, you know. Uh, so we, you know, we do get a lot of questions about scope and sequence, but as we said, you know, this is a tool to help with your scope and sequence. So you adapt it. If you need to change the words to fit in with your scope and sequence, you do it. Uh, we've made suggestions. You go from suffix s to es. We've made suggestions that you might start with the doubling rule and then go to drop the e rule, but you don't have to do it in that order. You know, but what I think is important, you have to start with what's safe to add, you know, before you start, you know, doing things to base words before you add suffixes. So, um, yes, by all means, just adapt it to your to your scope and sequence that's in your music with your student. Yeah. So in the so in as Sally said in here, there isn't a, a scope and sequence. It's just a set of resources to be as flexible as possible. But there is a playbury scope and sequence for schools. Um, and if you want to find out about that, so we've got a learn section on the website. And this is not um, as part of membership. This is for everyone to look at. Um, and we do have some articles on how, when do I start teaching morphology, morphology and spelling, um, and and the podcast. So when do I start teaching morphology? Um, mentions here a scope and sequence and where this fits in with the Playbury laser scope and sequence. And what would that? What would a good link be to for folks there? Yeah. So the Playbury laser scope and sequence at the moment is only being run with South Australian schools, um, and and it's not a kind of online publicly available. We certainly have plans for that, um, but that would be a matter of getting in touch with us and talking to us about that. Um, if, you, if you want a full kind of school-based sequence mm -hmm. that includes morphology. Otherwise, I think most, um, you know, as you said, Marnie, with, with your program, morphology is built in to most scopes and sequences. or, or And so, Really, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel there. We're just trying to give a set of tools so people can um, use this as part of their existing scope. Right. At the end um, of the Reading Simplified um, program, uh, we call our, our one-page scope and sequence a streamlined pathway. And at level 12, which is the end, that's when we start cracking, cracking into affixes. <laughs> and um, we have some resources already for members, but um, we, we need more. So this is a great mm. tool for them to just keep going with the ING and the ED and the ION. And um, so it fits really well with that. Um, we've got some people kind of wondering about the tension or the, the balance between this is a teacher led thing or do students play around with it? What can you describe that the use particularly in the classroom or intervention, you know, small group setting? Mm. Yes, I think, um, you know, it's a, it's a teacher-led thing, you know, we're using it as a teaching tool. Uh, and yes, students can use it, that's fine to a degree, but that's, that's not really multi-sensory, you know. So we're constantly wanting, as I said before, to get them to get it in the hand, you know, to get them to use what they're doing and then put it onto paper in some form, you know. Uh, those of us who have, you know, we started, like Michael said, with the physical cracker, which you can see behind both of us, uh, and we both work in intervention. You know, we we get our students moving things around on the board, you know, and then and then still coming back to write it on, onto paper. You know, we know how important that, that um, multi-sensory and that writing side is to our students. You know, if we're only just using our eyes, we're just not getting that full learning experience. So, um, we, you know, we can get very carried away with things which are fun to play with, but, you know, it's very much I do, we do, you do. You know, that's... Yeah. that's and you do a lot. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, it's, 
introduction and it's great you know um you know one of our year one teachers in south australia classroom teacher he's just found it's been fantastic he started off with the physical cracker and you know he's taught things on the actual cracker and then during the day they've been able to just pull up a word and think oh and then get the student to make it on the cracker and so on so it's led them into much more um depth of interest in exploring how words are put together or pulled apart at a very young age you know um so it's been good and uh, mentioning the physical cracker has gotten a lot of people's interest peaked. So can people buy that as well? Yes, you can buy that. Um, of course, there's a postage to, <laughs> to America or whatever. But we have posted a few, um, quite a few around the world, actually. So we're very happy to do that. And we do, um, if you go to, um, uh, we can let them know the website for that, because that's a different website at this stage. Eventually, it will all be together. Um, where we have all sorts of physical resources that you can buy. So you can buy the physical cracker, you can buy um, little little cracker boards like this. Um, Very okay. cool. That our, our community would be familiar with that type of approach. Yes, that's right. So they can write on here. Um, and, and various other things we've got there as and well. And where is that? We can maybe add it to the chat, the, the yeah. comments, um, the actual link, or the general page that you said is not the same one as word cracking. It's on, it's on Hands Free Education. Hands Free? Hands Berry. H-A-N-S-B-E-R-R-Y. E-C dot com dot A-U. Can I, I don't know if I, do you have a chat access? I'm not very good at spelling while I'm uh, but um, presenting. There are links on the WordCracker website. Oh, okay. That's good, people. So, if you go to the yeah, WordCracking yeah. website, you can get over to Hansberry. Ec. Ec. And dot what? A. Dot com. Dot au. Okay, I just lost what I had the thread there. Hopefully you guys can fix yeah. it, find it. And then- It's a little bit confusing at the moment because yeah. the word cracker yeah. started as a manual, a printed manual okay. and a board, and it's quite new, um, you know, the online That's why version. I wanted to get it out so, to our folks. Yeah, we haven't quite put the shop into the, <laughs> into the word cracking website yet. Yeah, so we and um, the other, other questions about tech are, um, could folks who tutor online use this with a screen sharing folk feature, particularly Zoom? Absolutely, yes. And I've done that myself. Mm -hmm. And part of the um, impetus behind doing it was when COVID hit and we were all having to tutor online. And yeah. I actually made it one straight away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A very simple version of this because it's so difficult, isn't it, when you're online? Right. So yes, you can share this and you can control it. Or if you're using Zoom, you can let Good. the kid control it. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we created. It work, works on an iPad. Okay, that's one of the on questions. A phone. The tablet, just generally, or the, on, the the iPad only? No, it's just a web application. It's a web app so browser, so it can work. Runs okay. A web browser. Yeah. Okay. The only functionality it doesn't have at this stage. It's coming. The only functionality it doesn't have on an iPad or a phone is the ability to type. So you know how it's typing in those free words? Mm -hmm. uh, just for technical reasons, I have tried to make it work and I haven't got it to work yet, but it's coming. It's coming. Well, you guys have covered a lot of ground. People are flipping out with enthusiasm, I would say, but we should probably wrap it up soon. Um, Greg, uh, my team member, is has drawn a name, so we're going to give out a, a prize for all the people that have commented. Thank you all so very much. It's been a very engaged crowd, including helping me out. Um, as we wait for Greg to give that a uh, prize, um, Michael and, Sh Sh and Sally, do you have any last thoughts to, to send um, us off for our day? Uh, well, I think from my perspective, get going. Did you want to mention the podcast? Yeah, sure. Um, so we have covered a fair bit of stuff today, but we also have a podcast episode. So Bill and I, Bill, who's not here today, is the other part of word cracking. 
Bill and I have a podcast called Discastia, and the last episode we did was about morphology. And so we go into a bit more depth than we've had time to do today in that latest episode. And so that might be a useful place to start as well if people want to know more. But also the website with all of our articles there hopefully answers people's questions. And I would really encourage people to give us feedback and ask us questions and make suggestions because we really do want to make this as useful as possible. And when you make something, it's very difficult to be objective about what you've done. So I really rely on getting that feedback from people and the suggestions and so on to try and make it easier. When, when we built it, we worked with 10 schools who were trialling it before we made it public. And, you know, they just gave us so much fantastic feedback. Um, you know, that just makes it better for everyone. So I would encourage that. Very open to having conversations and discussions. Mm -hmm. I know, I've already enjoyed um, talking about some features like that with you, Michael. Um, uh, I am going to be taking this video and putting it up on that website there, and we will include links that you guys um, approve. I will double check with you, like, is this the things that we talked about? So if there was something covered and you want to get to it, we will put it on this page up here tomorrow, most likely, if everything goes well with our tech. If you are a member of the Reading Simplified Academy, hold off a few hours so you can get the discount code 20% off, very generous from word cracking for our members. But even if you're not, the price is really sweet. So I encourage you to check it out and do the trial if you're not sure. And, and uh, we also got many, many um, thank yous, Michael and Sally. And a question, one more, Peggy. Yes, dyscasia, but with a D-Y, like dyslexia. Yeah. Isn't that right, Michael? D-Y-S. Yes, D-Y-S. Dyscasia, D-Y-S. Amy is probably um, a good person here to wrap it all up. She says, fabulous tool. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm really grateful for you, Michael and Sally, for creating this and then coming on us uh, to Resimplified to share it with us. And I'm thankful for all of you out there who've been encouraging one another and telling your friends. So we should sign off for now and let everybody get a little rest. But don't worry, this replay will be there for you in um, coming soon so you can follow up and dig in deeper with other tools. Here's to making great, great readers. Okay. Thank you, Thank everyone. You so